Would you like to turn a room of your house into a castle? I just did. Turned out pretty good. This is how I did it. First thing I did was apply a coat of primer all over the walls. I used this. Oil based. Next, apply a coat of solid gray. I used gray granite. By the way, this is the color palette I used. Used every color on this paint strip with the exception of the lightest one, Frozen Ice Crystal. Got the paint from Walmart and used their brand Color Place. I used semi-gloss. I even mixed in some glaze to help it blend better. You may not really need to use the glaze. I think it helped a little. You can play around with it. Next, use craft paper to make a template for your arches. If you want arches, that is. Cut out your template however you want. Measuring tape is your friend here. I painted my arches black using ebony stone black color and used a stencil and then a shade of purple was then painted onto the stencil with a stencil roller. Two coats letting them dry at least five minutes apart. I highly recommend using a much larger stencil if you will be covering a large area. Also, use this stencil spray or something like it to help hold the stencil in place. Don't just use tape. And clean your stencil with soap and water every once in a while. But I must admit, blue painter's tape was my friend at many times when doing this project. Now, make some template stones out of foam board and an X-Acto knife. Now I made 10 stones. I used the sizes 12 by 12, 6 by 6, 6 by 12, 4 by 6, 8 by 16, 2 by 12, 4 by 12, 2 by 6, 8 by 8, and 4 by 4. Now just cut out the squares and round off the corners with the X-Acto knife. Next, use the stone templates to trace around in pencil directly onto the wall. Be creative here. Keep in mind that you are just using the templates as a guide. Now this is very important. You need to listen. If you need to make a particular stone a little longer or wider to make it fit better with the grand scheme, by all means do so. Just slide the template over more and retrace and use an eraser for the other line that's not needed. Once you get used to it, you will see how to slide the templates a little here and there so you won't even need to do any erasing. You will just be able to do it on the fly. Um, it is in this step you will need to decide how thick you want your mortar lines. You may prefer them a little thinner than I did mine. Keep in mind that they will end up a little thicker once painted. When penciling, I went with a 1 4th inch separation from stone to stone. After being painted twice, the mortar lines ended up being about 7 16ths of an inch. Next, paint in the black mortar. I used garden urn color for this between the pencil lines using a very fine tipped quality paintbrush like this one. And now it's sea sponge time. Vary the grays and layers. Overlap the mortar a little bit with each and every stone. This is where you have to apply some major creativity to get the stones looking like they have texture and the right shade that you're going for. I mainly use the color Secret Locket and in Industrial Gray for this. It's okay to rub the sea sponge here and there, but you mainly want to use a blotting type technique. After I was finished with this step, I decided the walls were too dark and I re-blotted on some gray granite color to each and every stone to make it look better. Lighten it up a little bit. Next, sea sponge a 3D effect. I used the overhead chandelier as my imaginary light source. So each stone got a dab of secret locket light gray on the top and greyhound shadow dark gray on the bottom. If you have no overhead light source, then you may want to use a side window instead. 
So in this case, for every stone, the furthest part of the stone from the window will be dark gray and the closest will be light gray. Next, after you are finally satisfied with the way the texture and shades of the stones are looking, go over the mortar one last time. Do it as neatly as possible this time. Try not to miss any curves. For my room, when you do the math, there are about 1,600 individual curves that need to be painted, so it's easy to miss a few. Next, stencil on wisteria or some type of vine or flowers if you'd like. After stenciling, you will need to add some 3D lighting effects on your vine so it blends in with your 3D stones. In addition, I used a purple paint pen to outline each flower petal to make it stand out even more. Now, just add decorations and you're done. I would strongly suggest adding a medieval looking chandelier to the room before doing anything. Got mine off eBay. You can find lots of cool castle type stuff on eBay. And there you have it. A castle room for you to chill out in and meditate in and sit there and 